to know right now, in this moment, who you are. Who you just heard was Kerry Washington, who plays Olivia Pope on the TV drama Scandal. Scandal is one of the most popular shows on the tube. The show, of course, though, is Make Believe. Talking about Waco, Texas and Baylor University and its football program, they've had a long-time scandal. It's been going on for several years, sexual assault from some Baylor football players against some female students. The university, as far as some of the officials, had an opportunity to come to those female students in their time of need, but did not. And those players involved were not kicked off the team or faced any hard punishment of any type. In other words, it's almost like condoning it, putting football, putting winning ahead of principle and what was right. Well, that was the parts of Baylor, but the whole is Baylor had to do something about it. And they did by putting principle ahead of football, firing Art Bryles, who was responsible a large part for the turnaround of Baylor football, taking it from being a loser to being a perennial winner. But again, the university knew that football and winning was not the point. The athletic director also quit, and so did the university president, Ken Starr. So if we can make that difficult transition from um, what has gone on with the scandal to football, what's this going to do to the program? Well, I think this year they'll still be a winning team, um, but I think in long term it's going to really hurt them. It's already hurt their current uh, recruiting class, class of 2016. Some of those players got out of their letters of intent. And the class of 2017, quite a few of those guys decommitted. Yeah, the scandal had that big of an effect. So now the new head coach, Jim Grobe, knows that, you know, short term, it's not going to be easy. But even more of the long term, it's going to be difficult for the guys from Waco. But he does have back Seth Russell at QB, who only got to play more than half of 2015. The neck injury made it um, to where he could not complete the last five games plus of the season. During his time, though, 29 touchdowns. And remember, he played barely more than six games, only six interceptions, a little over 2,000 yards. Russell goes down, though. The quarterback situation looks very bleak because Jared Stenham, who did a terrific job when he was playing QB, well, he's now transferred. So, yeah, the scandal has also hit um, players who played last year um, at Baylor. The ground game, though, this is going to be part of the most dependable area. Shock Limwood's back over 1,300 yards on the ground. And Johnny Jefferson ran for 299 yards against North Carolina in that bowl game a year ago. He's back, and he had 1,000 yards on the nose last season. The receiving core, it's not going to be as good. You can't expect it to be because Corey Coleman was a Blitnikoff winner, best receiver in the country. He's gone, along with the third best receiver in Jay Lee, another home run threat. So KD Cannon, who last season had over 800 yards receiving, you have him back. And also, too, uh, Lynx Hawthorne, who played a little bit QB, but will be dependent more on, on wide receiver um, this time. So he can, he can play either one, but I think receiver will be his main trait. Chris Platt, a senior. He'll try to help out the Bears receiving core, and Ishmael Zamora will try to do the same, but Zamora has to miss the first three games because of animal cruelty. Offensive line faces the biggest rebuilding job because they only return one full-time starter in Kyle Fuller, who has made 26 starts of his career and was second team all Big 12 a year ago. And they've got uh, Blake Blackmer at uh, left guard, who's only made one career start. So, again, it's going to be thin for that Baylor offensive line. But if they can get things figured out, the ground game should once again be a factor, and they should give um, Russell enough time to throw the ball. Defensively, defensive line, just like the offensive line, has to be retooled. And this is even more dire. You lost all four of the uh, defensive line, and that included Andrew Billings and Sean Oakman. Billings um, and Oakman all be 12 talents. So K.J. Smith, who was freshman All-American two years ago, now playing in his junior year at DE and defensive tackle, you have the senior in Byron Bonds. Now, Baylor will play a 4-3 alignment, and they returned two of the three full-time linebackers, including Taylor Young, Entering his senior year, had four sacks a year ago. He'll play the weak side and playing the bare position at linebacker will be uh, Trayvon Blanchard, um, a guy who can break up passes at the last minute, but also a terrific tackler, had 83 stops, leading returning tackler for Baylor. Secondary, plenty of experience, but I don't know how much that's going to help if Baylor's defensive line can't get to the quarterback. Last year, they were not good in the sack department, so pressure will be a major key to make the secondary's job easier. Uh, Ryan Reed with three interceptions, you return him in the corner, and both safeties are back, and Chaz Waz 
and Orion Stewart. Breaking down the Bears' schedule, those first three games were all non-conference against teams that barely even have a pulse. But then again, with Baylor scheduling, what's new when it comes to the non-conference? Look at the middle part of the schedule. You have a bye week before Kansas and a bye week after Kansas? Well, I don't know, whatever. And the schedule will get tougher, though, second half of it, playing TCU and Oklahoma back-to-back and closing off the season against high-scoring Texas Tech and going to Morgantown to face the Mountaineers. Even though Baylor did the right thing by firing Art Bryles, it will have an effect on Baylor's performance, and the offensive and defensive lines need to be retooled doesn't help either. I've got Baylor digressing this season, only winning seven games.